So this is Bergman's rule. Carl Bergman's a German biologist. He came up with this rule in 1847. People had known about it for some time before that and suspected it, but he put it down on paper. What are we looking at on this slide? This is a map of Sweden. This map shows us Sweden, and these are the latitudes, beginning with 57 degrees, which is fairly far north, even at the bottom of Sweden. It's, it's a ways up. And then going all the way up to the Arctic at, at sort of 66. Along this axis, this is the average body mass index of moose. Hunters go out and they kill a moose, and what they find is that the further north they go, the bigger the moose get. Kill a moose outside of Stockholm, he might weigh, what's this, 190 kilograms. If you kill a moose up here at 66 degrees north, holy cow, 230 kilograms, way bigger. So Bergman's rule, as illustrated by this graph, generally applies to mammals, sometimes to birds. There's some controversy about that. But basically to endotherms, warm-blooded animals, that for a given species or a given population, organisms of greater mass are found at higher latitudes or colder environments. All right? So for a given species or a given population, organisms of greater mass, higher mass, are found at higher latitudes or in colder environments. Huh. In other words, the further north you go, What? Bigger you get. Yeah. <laughs> now, notice that I don't say larger, but I say more massive. That's important. It's not just about bigger. This is a subtle difference, but I'm going to explain why in a second. When we looked at uh, last week the reading that Domenical gave us on climate, right, on, on rapid climate changes in, in paleo history and archaic environments, one of the things he said was that people have to adapt, organisms have to adapt very fast to changing environments. This puts a big selective pressure on them. It turns out Bergman's rule works even in the archaeological record, in the, the Paleolithic record. So if we go to an environment where we know that, let's say, an ice age happened, even for the same latitude, same spot, you can see across generations organisms changing in size depending on the ambient temperature. So awesome. So remember, more massive, not just bigger. Why? What's the difference? Well, that difference is explained to us by Allen's rule. <coughs> Thank you, Joel Allen, American zoologist, who came up with his rule in uh, 1877. Similar, but slightly different from Bergman's rule. Anybody here like math? One person. God, two people. Tolerate math. Uh, at geometry, though? Does, does anyone like geometry? That's different. Yeah, yeah. All right. This is sort of Geometry 101, and it was actually our friend Galileo who got us started on this idea. The relationship between surface area and mass, which, as it turns out, is mathematically knowable. We can create formulas to understand this. And it has implications for us as ecological anthropologists. So, Alan notices that in endothermic species, so again, we're talking about generally warm-blooded mammals here, like us, that in endothermic species, the appendages of those in cold climates tend to be shorter than in animals of the same species from warmer climates. So just like with Bergman's rule, we can talk about a population of animals or a species of animals, and as you get colder and colder, the appendages get smaller and smaller. Why is that? To retain heat, exactly. So these two cubes, right, 
They have the same volume. They have the same volume, but one has a lot more surface area than the other. The long and lean one has more surface area for the same volume. We talked about vasoconstriction. Why do we vasoconstrict? So that we don't radiate too much heat, right? If you covered the surface area of both of these shapes with blood vessels that were radiating heat, which one would radiate more heat? The tall, skinny one. Exactly. Which would mean it would get colder, it would have to eat more, right, in order to maintain its, its uh, thermodynamic balance. Right? So the most efficient shape for a cold climate is the one that puts the most amount of volume in the least amount of surface area. It exposes the least amount to the cold. Sound good? So when we combine that with Allen's rule and Bergman's rule together, we should expect in the coldest climates at the highest latitudes, short appendages, lots of mass, very little surface area. Right? Yes? Exactly. Yeah, because as endotherms, as human beings, uh, the, the comment was this just means less work. Right? As endotherms, all of our heat's got to come from in here. If you want to be warmer, you've got to go find something to eat. And if you're trying to find something to eat in the Arctic, that's a lot of work. Right? So if you can turn down the amount of heat that you radiate, that means you keep more for yourself, right? you warm more efficiently, and you don't need as many calories. Good balance. If you want an example of these two things in action, here's a photo of me and my wife. I don't think she'll mind. <laughs> this is, if you're struggling to understand the Allens and Bergmans. My wife is from Northern Ontario. I am from Southern Ontario. She's five foot zero. Lots of mass. She used to be a gymnast, you know, she's very muscular, right? Uh, I am long and lanky. I do not have small appendages. Remember, we're not just talking about legs and arms. Nose and ears also apply, and frankly, one of us has big ears and one of us does not, right? Alternatively, you could just consider rabbits, <laughs> if you wish. Which one of these comes from a cold climate? Okay. Yeah. So when we say appendages, we don't just mean long, skinny arms and legs, long, skinny fingers. We can mean tails, absolutely. We can certainly mean ears. I mean, look at the massive ears on this guy, right? And if we just go back and think about our shapes for a second, and you look at the ears on that guy, think about how much heat is getting radiated out of those ears. Total non-starter in a cold environment, right? They would freeze off in seconds, right? Super long ears, right? More pronounced pointy face, right? As opposed to a flatter face. Longer, narrower limbs, right? More exposed. Body lies flat against the ground, right? So we have some differences in shape that are associated with latitude or with temperature.